And uh, looking forward today to get this Super Sprint operational if we can somehow. First of all though, let's take a look and see what it's doing right now. And this is what we're currently getting guys. Just a lot of blue stripes. And not much else. So we definitely have some issues. So let's go have a look at the board. So we've got the back off the Super Sprint here. Let's see if we can see the board right from the top here. And this top board here should be the CPU and sound, I believe. Um, there's a Yamaha chip up here somewhere. And, uh, and I think these particular ROMs are uh, the sound ROMs, I think, for Super Sprint. Now, look, Super Sprint and Championship Sprint sound exactly the same to me. So, I don't know. Are they actually different sets of ROMs? Probably have to check it on the actual ROM sets, like the MAME sets. You'll be able to tell if those are different or not. Uh, and I am guessing there that all of those are related to sound. Um, but it's right next to the Yamaha chip. It seems to make sense. The rest is we've got the main processor. And this is where it gets interesting, guys, because... This processor here is not the processor that we want in here. So I don't know where this 304 ES one came from. So yeah, that's not the one that we want. Um, so that's not going to help our situation at all. And then we have the main connector here coming into the video board. And this is just a really big PCB set guys you can see you know these system 2 setups there's a lot of chips a lot of things that can go wrong and we can see here the board has already had some work done on the bottom here which isn't good but at the same token it does mean that it has been been repaired I guess um, very old uh, switching power supply I did uh, test the 5 volts on the connectors the checking points down here just on the board there so it's good to check on the board itself especially with these system 2 boards because yeah look at the look at this cable harness guys this cable harness is huge and it's the same with the championship sprint and you just lose you just lose voltages you know there's a resistance natural resistance resistance on the headers and you will lose some voltages some of these headers aren't on here very nicely but anyway our main problem here is this guy this is definitely wrong so we're not going to get far with it like that so the other important thing to look at is the slapstick security chip which we spoke about and so the slapstick security chip is this one here and you can see on the end it's got 108 which relates to super sprint and uh, 109 relates to championship sprint so the aim of the game here guys is uh, you know, I could try and take out, you know, my the right processor out of my championship sprint and put it in here. But given that the fact that the one he gave me, the correct one in the box, has broken pins and broken legs on it, I don't want to take that risk of uh, destroying my own and only uh, processor in the championship sprint. So instead what I'm going to do is swap this whole board over because these system two boards should be the same in terms of the CPU. There are some little gotchas. Um, I've seen that most of them share the bottom video one as well, but some games, a couple of games, actually have a slightly different layout and a few more circuitry for uh, supporting a couple of the games. Um, so that's a bit of a gotcha when you first look at it and go, hang on, the system two board, but the video, whole video area looks different. All the ROM chips, as all the game ROMs, are laid out differently on the other board type. But uh, I believe they are all compatible because I actually saw a, a championship sprint with the other board layout with the ROMs in place. So I think in, this, in effect they are all compatible but for certain games you need the other type of video um, board layout. 
Um, and the only other consideration is once you swap all the ROMs, all the game ROMs, and, uh, and all the sound ROMs if it's a completely different game, and the slapstick security chip, uh, then you'll be fine. And of course, um, you can get that multi slapstick now from UK VAC. The guy on there has created a multi slapstick to uh, allow you to play multiple games. Now, of course, you, 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 can, well, you can't play multiple games, it just it sort of emulates the, uh, the multiple slapsticks for different games via dip switch. Uh, you'd still have to change over the ROM sets manually until someone comes out with some sort of multi board, which would be pretty cool. So, there you go, guys, that's what we're working with. I'm going to remove the very top and we're just going to change the whole CPU board over. I'm going to actually leave the sound ROMs initially because I swear that the sound ROMs are the same. Now, if it doesn't work, I'll swap, I'll swap the uh, those top ROMs across just because I've got that wrong. Um, but I thought that most of these top ones just relate to, to sound. Alright guys, well let's flick over now to the championship sprint and let's see what's going on around the back there. Okay guys, well I'm a little bit tight for space here, so uh, excuse the camera work, but we can see here we've got the main CPU board, and this time we've got the right processor, focus, there we go, that's the right one that we want. So yeah, and there's you know this board is really really clean. I noticed on the other board, by the way, I didn't point out that one of the stickers off the burnt uh, EEPROMs was off. And I think if it's flooded with ultraviolet light, that's what can kill them. But it's not good to have those exposed. So yeah, there could still be other problems on that uh, top CPU board. And of course, there could be problems on the bottom. But we know that this set. This full set here in the championship sprint works. So we really do have the ability to do some swaps. And uh, hopefully through a bit of trial and error we'll find out what's going on. Now, as I said, I have tested the voltages on the other one and they is getting correct voltages. I've got to be really careful though with these header pins. The headers on here, some of them, um, they sort of have an extra pin. And so they're sort of offset by one. See that one there at the top? It's not, not like that on the other, on the championship sprint. I'm just not sure these headers were redone at one point and they didn't get the right sizes. So anyway, I've got to be really careful that I put all this back properly with the right headers. So yeah, guys, that's uh, the championship sprint out will come this top board. So that's what I'll do now. We can see the slapstick there for the championship sprint. Just zoom in there and we can see it's got 109 on the end of that slapstick so we'll need to uh, swap those over when we swap the boards. Okay, so I'm going to get on with that. I'll get these two unscrewed out on the table, get the chip swapped over, put the boards in and let's see what we get. Right, so I've got them both out here and other than the colour difference they are almost identical. I was actually comparing them, spending a bit of time looking from one board to the other and everything's the same but there's a few curious things. Oh, by the way, look at that, the way that that uh, that incorrect processor was even stuck in there. It's like half up out of its socket anyway, so I don't know. One thing that's curious though is that these two, which seem to be again, you know, game runs, I might have to swap these over. We'll see how we go. Um, but on championship sprint, they're different in terms of the way that they're laid in. So is that a mistake? <laughs> It should be populated those two, and this one it left empty. I don't know, I can't trust anything really on that board. But I may need to check that out as well, in case we get stuck. But this is the board that's going on. Now the only other difference, everything else is the same, and the writing, everything on here is the same, except this little area here where it's blank. You can see on the Super Sprint board, we've actually got a couple of capacitors there, and it's slightly different 
structure so I don't know what's going on with that I thought initially it might have been for you know big caps like that maybe for saving high scores in the NVRAM but I know my championship sprint board which is this one actually does save the high scores so and it doesn't have all that stuff there so I'm not sure guys if you know what the uh, what's going on there between the two boards please uh, comment in the uh, comments below let me know all right so our first step is to swap out the slapstick so I'll go ahead and do that now and we'll just do that and then if we have no joy again you know we still may have problems with the the video board but uh, yeah we may have to change these ROMs and of course if I've got problems with these ROMs themselves like especially this one that's a concern um, if I do end up having to swap these over then uh, we may still have an issue but look let's see how far we can get it's all trial and error at this stage okay so I'll get the slapstick swapped over let's get the board in and let's fire it up okay guys we've got some progress yes the screen's still blue but we should blue green this time so it was straight blue before I can hear it doing some sounds and of course we have logic because it's straight into the testing screen we must have the test switch on now, interestingly I did fire this up just before I started recording just to have a quick check first and it was completely blue now it looks like there's some green in it but we've certainly got some screen issues still now, the other thing I found going through this test we advance much harder to see now so the pedal test um, it's only doing two it's got left and right up here instead of you know left middle and right I, I haven't done the test screen in a super sprint before but I gather it should be showing all three and if I do the left one it's doing some values but it says okay do the middle one Got OK and I can't do the right one now I think this is because of course I haven't swapped over all the, the ROMs on the top so clearly I still have to swap over the additional ROMs that are controlling um, which makes sense that'll be the extra th extra uh, code I guess for dealing with the third player and so forth that must be on those top ROMs so we will do that um, if I get past here though if I hit the blue button it says okay if I hit the red button then it goes straight to bad and I can't actually get past here so the only way I can do it uh, just hang on a second I have to hold I think the blue button and hit the red but I can't do that while I'm doing the camera so just a second okay so that's what I did I just held down the blue button and hit the red button um, and I'm talking about this of course held down that button and uh, clicked on the red and that got me past that bad test so still a problem there regardless uh, in terms of the pedals and now we have the low res liter test which I'm not sure what that test is actually um, advance forward we've got the numbers and letters and scrolling playfield test and we can use the using the wheel here at the moment it is actually moving the screen but of course it's not it should have a proper playfield up there and of course that bottom video board could be the thing at fault of course so I mean at the end of the day we can do a complete swap over but I know that bottom board has got some of the power I think soldered onto the board it doesn't have a header so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that straight away without um, getting another header for it if I, want, if I need to swap that bottom board in but I think first of all we'll certainly swap the top ROMs Let's continue on through the test here it's a motion object test again using the, uh, the wheel you can see it moving that way this one moving this way and the poor yellow wheel doesn't do anything I gather because of the, the ROM set really curious how the green has now just suddenly appeared it certainly wasn't there before no red 
So if we advance again, and uh, again another little test for spinning these wheels to move this around on the screen. So yeah, we've got logic. We've got the test, obviously. I don't know what this is. Maybe because we're missing the yellow, it's not complete. Not sure. Now, that should be red, and clearly that's not red. We've got a lot of green bands. Hopefully I haven't got some chassis problems as well, guys, but I don't know. Given the fact that it just sort of came up from blue by itself without any changes, I tend to suggest that it's board related, I think. Let's try going to green. Well, green makes no change. Blue, no change. <laughs> White, no change. Righty, eh? Hmm, curious. The white is sort of white. <laughs> uh, wow, that's interesting. Grey. Mm, back to red. I'll carry on. Uh, what's going on here? Can't remember what this is supposed to be. Oh, I think that's the... Um, that should show all the colour bands. I remember from the championship sprint. Whew. Difficult to read. 1,451 coins. 1,415 coins in the right. So yeah, this is left and right coins. Again, there's no third coins. One player, two players, there's no third. So yeah, guys, I've got to swap those top chips out. I don't think it's going to impact these colours though. I think that's the bottom board or the monitor chassis perhaps. But um, we're getting somewhere. We don't want to reset those tables. And we've got game times and then all the switch settings. Uh, we're back to the sound. Very quiet too. Yeah. Alright guys, well I'm going to take the board out and swap the chips over on the top and let's um, let's see what it does but we are getting somewhere right the chips are all swapped and uh, it's not a difficult job it's just time consuming just slowly jacking up each side with a little screwdriver under there and bringing them up proper IC puller is the way to do it um, pulls them out slowly but anyway, if you be careful with a, a screwdriver, you can get them up. So I have done them all. I have done all the ones that were labelled on both boards. I stuck a sticker over the top of that one that didn't have a sticker on it. So it doesn't get exposed any further. Now, of course, or well, actually the other thing I found was that, yes, these two that I found before that were over here, um, I checked online and everyone else has got their chips there. So... I think not only was the, uh, the original processor bad, uh, of, well the wrong one obviously, um, but also having those ROMs in the wrong place wouldn't have helped. Now are they in the right order, 1920 as per the stickers on here, I don't know. Are the ROMs any good? I don't know. But I tell you what, actually just doing the test that we did was actually a good thing to do because we got logic, we got it working, it was pretty much showing the championship uh, sprint test screens with those ROMs all working so we should at least I mean I, I'm doubtful this is going to solve the color problem I think that's something else on the video board but um, we should at least get the super sprint fully working test mode uh, with these ROMs and if we don't then yeah there's something perhaps even wrong with this set of ROMs which will be another thing I'll need to check. But anyway, let's um, put this board back in. It's quite funny now. I've really, the, the old Super Sprint board is now completely populated with Championship Sprint. <laughs> um, get myself a new CPU. Who knows, that board could work. If this one does, then yeah, it's, it's quite likely. Um, although, yeah, there could be some other problems with this board. Don't know yet. Okay, let's get this guy in and see where we're at. Right, well interesting guys, I've got the blue screen back again and it comes straight up with a COM failure uh, with the 6502 which is for the sound test 
So for some strange reason, after swapping all those ROMs, it's no longer talking to the sound. If I go advance to the pedal, we now have the three pedals, so that's good news. So we've definitely got the extra logic for the Super Sprint. I was jamming myself in here, the whole cabinet's up against the other one. So it's hard to do, so... But same, uh, same problem. I can, can click on these and they sort of work. But, and it says OK, but as soon as I hit the red button, it goes bad and it won't allow me to advance. So let me just do the hold the blue button, red button trick. OK. I can't remember what this litre test is, but anyway, moving on. <laughs> Alphanumeric test. This time we can at least see the image of the playfield, so that's a that's better. But we should be able to actually use the wheel here. I'm pretty sure on the other one because this is scrolling playfield test. I'm pretty sure you should be able to scroll it with the wheels, and the wheel inputs doesn't seem to be working. So we had wheel input before when we used the championship sprint ROMs, and now we don't have any. So that's interesting. Um, have a blue button do anything here? No. So, okay, so we go to the next one. This was the one where we moved the, um, the objects. And again, spinning these wheels and nothing's moving. So getting no connection through to the controls. Remember this one? This one was moving nicely last time. No go. So yeah, I mean, considering we've only swapped the ROMs over, guys, there's got to be some issues there with the ROM. So I'm going to see what could be salvaged otherwise by using some of the other ch chips. But I think the bottom line is I'm going to have to get a whole new set of ROMs to be sure, which is a bit unfortunate. Now we are at least seeing this. We didn't see this properly displayed before, but of course we haven't got our colours. To be perfectly honest, if we had the red and the green, I think, you know, the screen would be looking actually pretty good. Um, but for some reason we're losing both. Now, if that's the video board down the bottom, or it's connection up to the monitor, I'm not sure. Um, I did notice when I was re-plugging in the monitor that I think there was some, like, tape cables and stuff going in for the RGB, so who knows, it could be a dodgy connector up there. Need to check that out. <laughs> Here we have our colours, so we're going to get red, nothing, green, nothing. Whoa, lots of blue. <laughs> White uses the blue, obviously, with the RGB. Grey has a little bit of blue in there. Back to red, so again, that's an improvement from before in some ways. Um, and it really just looks like we're missing those guns. Uh, again, hopefully it's not the monitor, uh, given the fact we sort of had that green one of the last tests tends to suggest that maybe there might be just something dicky um, with the cabling, I don't know. Yep, let's not jump ahead too far. We still have a lot of other issues to solve here. And dot screen. We get to the accounting information. Everything is clear. And interestingly, of course, the accounting information that I was looking at before would have been the accounting information from um, Championship Sprint. So it's interesting that there's absolutely nothing in here from porting those other ROMs across. Um, so I guess that's the NVRAM chip, whichever one that was, the one that's responsible for saving that information. Completely blank. Um, we won't reset the high score, um, if I go to the next screen, so our game times of course again we have nothing, but this is interesting, the switch settings, credit mode, mech multiplier, bonus, all this stuff, there's no actual setting, difficulty, off obstacles, so we don't have any figures there, so that's also a worry, I think it's just done its little reset, Come back to the 6502, and again, we've got the Convalia guy. So, yeah, um, one and a half steps forward, one and a half steps back. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I have to sort of have a bit of a bit of a think. It would be nice to sort of solve the colour problem too. I'm a bit concerned that that might be um, something to do with the bottom board, but. Really, what I need to do is definitely resolve this logic issue here. I know that all I've changed is the ROM set, and you know, all this worked pretty well with the championship sprint ROMs, which we know work. So, mm. all right, guys, let me go away and have a bit of a think. Right, guys, so I did have a bit of a think about it, and I was thinking about those two on the end here. This is the um, this is the old board, not the board that's actually in there now, alright? I'm going to, to be careful how I describe this now. <laughs> but anyway, as you remember, um, on the original Super Sprint board, when I first took it out, these two chips were in the wrong place. They were here. So, uh, you know, based on internet, looking at internet uh, pictures and so forth, I realised, well, that wasn't right. So I moved them into the right place here. And, of course, then we had those problems that we just had and then I thought well maybe I've got them still the wrong way around so I swapped them from there to there you know as in terms of I flipped them around in the right spot as soon as I did that guys got a bit more success now we still have a blue screen uh, but now we can run the sound test I'll get through that because it's just finished so we'll just go through this, but I'll just show you everything else that's currently working. Um, I still have to get past this pedal thing that hasn't changed. So we've got some problems with the uh, the pedal pots. So they'll need to be rectified separately. Just hang on, get past the screen. Okay, get past the liter test. Still not sure what that is. Alphanumeric. Now on the scrolling playfield test, we move the wheel. We are indeed scrolling. So all that's working well. That's the other wheel here I'm using. Um, I don't think the yellow wheel actually does anything in this mode. Um, but yeah, that's all scrolling fine. So no problems there. Hit the red button and back in this mode here where we can move these around, this dot around with the, um, with the two wheels again. So all that's working again, which is great. Hit the red button. This one here, yeah, works fine. It's great. The colors, of course. You know, same problem with the colors. No point going through that again. We know we don't have anything other than blue. <laughs> Check out these. Now the stats are working. So interestingly, guys, those two particular chips on the end here, let's just flick over to them a minute. These two on the board here are responsible for both communicating through to the 6502 pokey sound chip and also for communicating to the controls so i guess if you've got a super sprint and you've got either pokey comms issues or a um, issue with communicating with the controllers probably those two chips are at fault so that's something cool to learn out of that mistake and guys look at these stats now now that the stats are correct 64,000 coins whoa we just got a little bit of of white pop in that green has just popped in hmm guys is this just a dodgy connector somewhere now we have green and blue interesting in fact do we we should flick around to that uh, screen I'm pretty sure we're going to see the green screen now Gosh, look at those. Wow. Total total game time, 20,808 hours. Wow. Hang on, is that even right? Look, average game time, <laughs> 65,515. Hmm, hang on a second. <laughs> hang on a second. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny though, because like if you look at the heats... Yeah, even the two-player heat, would you expect it to be so low and have so many one-player and... Hmm... <laughs> I don't know now, guys, if that's actually correct or not. Um, oh, 
wouldn't seem to make sense either because that center coins is 32,000 coins and yet the two player heats are only one. I don't know. <laughs> I think it might be messed up. Let's go to the next screen. Now I'm going to reset the high score table. Let me just do that. Okay. And let's go to the next screen and now we have our last setting so that was sorry that was the other thing that those two roms were responsible for if you're not getting the settings like we had missing here before then that may be the issue now I'll tell you what the screen is really quite solid uh, if i can get all three colors i reckon this um will look pretty nice so let's go back through to the uh, we'll go through to the sound I'll turn the sound up a little bit it's a little bit distorted up loud sort of thing so um let's see what it sounds like and of course it is doing its stereo thing left and right and it's got two separate controls internally so yeah no we've definitely got green definitely got green just uh no red by the looks of things get past this there we go, some green. Hey, look at that. <laughs> green on the track. Gosh, just need to get the red. There we are. Ta da! Green, blue, sort of white. <laughs> Grey's not too bad. Doesn't need a lot of red, obviously, the grey. Okay, so we just don't have a red gun. Isn't it funny how it just sort of popped in there? Okay, well let's flick it out a test and see if it hits into game mode. Whee! Here we go. Guys, if we could get the red going. We've pretty much got a working game. Oh, we've got some control issues, I think, still though. Those pedals and I'm not sure about the yellow controller. So let's just coin up here. Just flip these on. This last one, is that coining? Oh, yep. There we go. Now, ugh, it's a bit distorted when the main music's on. Turn it down a little bit. Okay, now, I use the middle car, which is this guy here. So this one, coming up the middle now, I can control perfectly. In fact, it's got a real nice spin on the wheel. Oh, I saw a bit of red. <laughs> Guys. Saw a bit of red briefly. Maybe just that little jogging of the. It's got to be a loose wire, guys. It has to be, huh? It's got to be. So to come in briefly like that, something's loose. So that could be an easy fix. So the middle controller is uh, is working, but. I'm not sure about this yellow one, I don't think it's working at all. Oops, sorry, can't see the screen here while I'm looking down. I think the yellow one's um, steering wheel doesn't work, but the accelerator at least starts it. That's the one there, but of course we've got these acceleration problems. We've got the blue one moving around with the wheel. And you know, I'll put the accelerator down. Okay, so, yep, can control the blue one. Does it stop though? No. <laughs> so I take my foot off the accelerator and it's still still going. So that whole um, calibration thing of the, the uh, foot pedal is not working. So yeah, guys, it looks like we have a steering problem with this one. It might be the Opti sensor on that. Um... Otherwise, the other three are indeed working, and it's, um, it's hard to play all three of these at once. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not so sure what's happening with the sound, why it's so sort of distorted. It's not so crash hot, but I definitely need to fix this red, guys. I saw it. Did you, you see it briefly flashed on? So I'm really starting to think it's got to be some sort of some sort of cabling issue. So let me see if I can check that out. And if we can at least get the colour, then we're almost there. Then it's just really the controls, fixing up those few controls. And uh, we've got a working game. <laughs> that's fantastic. And of course, that's all from just swapping the top board. Unless there is something dodgy going on with the output for the RGB on the bottom board, which could be causing it. It's possible. Anyway, guys, let me go check this out, see if I can get some red happening. Right guys, well as you can see, the monitor's now gone. <laughs> so what, what happened? Right, well, I did start doing some troubleshooting and I didn't actually film all of this. I took a few photos here, so I'll show you as I explain what I did. But when I went around the back, uh, I did find that all the core cables, the core monitor cables for the RGB from the board all the way up to the uh, PCB had been spliced in and they were just taped up. And I think what's happened at some point, because these 19 inch monitors, the original ones are really difficult to find. So whenever they fail, often you get some sort of mismatch of tubes and chassis that have been put together as a replacement. So I think that's exactly what's happened here. Um, so I was immediately suspicious of those, you know, connections and I did actually undo all the connections. My God, that black tape just gets stuck all over your hands. Um, you know, I mean, really it should be shrink wrapped guys, not just taped up. So it was a bit, bit dodgy, but anyway, I, I undid all the uh, existing tape that was there just to check to see, you know, if the connections, they always look pretty good actually. So I got the multimeter and I did a continuity test and from the board all the way up to the monitor chassis, every single color, including red, which of course we're missing, uh, was all fine. Um, I was getting continuity to there. So I thought, okay, well, I've got to work my way into the chassis. Now I'm not, you know, really clued up on monitor chassis. I'm slowly learning little bits and pieces as we go along. But I am aware that on the net board, um, it's quite common that uh, one of the transistors could be could be gone, um, could have failed. And it's quite easy to see the transistors for each color on the back of the neck board. So I got that neck board off and I had a look at the transistors and I could see quite clearly which one was for red, green and blue. And I, I did, a, I did a, a, an ohm test across the, each transistor and I don't think you can do that in circuit actually. So I don't know, but it was giving me the same reading on each. So I, I don't know if that's was the right way to test that but I sort of thought well maybe the transistor is actually actually good and then when I looked at the connection between the base leg on the transistor to uh, the uh, red wire coming into the neckboard the red input there I noticed that there had already been solder over the over the trace to connect those two up because there should be a trace connecting it and someone had actually soldered it and the solder looked pretty bad so I thought hmm Suspicious. <laughs> Someone's already done some work to the red trace area to that transistor. So I, you know, I tested it, and it, it was it was giving me some continuity, but not always. Whereas the other ones, when I, you know, did the test with the multimeter, it was giving me continuity every time. So I decided that um, I'd reflow that solder. So I, I did that. I reflowed the solder, and then when I was going to put the neck board back on to the monitor tube. I noticed that there was this really strange plastic ridge on the back of the, the, the neck board. Um, and taking a closer look, it looks like it's part of the neck off another monitor that's got broken off and stuck on there. <laughs> so I really do think that at some point, yeah, the old monitor may have, uh, may have been broken or busted or then the neck came off and took half the other bit of the monitor off and the bit of plastic was still there. So what that meant was is that neck board wasn't actually right up onto the onto the monitor pins. So I was really thinking, wow, I, don't know, I lifted and took all that excess plastic off there. I mean, it just sort of crumbled off, but that took it off. And then I was able to put that neck board back on there really flush. And guys, I was I was thinking this is it, you know, reflowed the solder, the other thing was sticking the neck board out a bit, you know, all the other 
pins had been checked, all the other wires had been checked for continuity, the plugs were in solid. In fact, that plug on the PCB itself, you know, so from the game board coming out, there's a little key hole, like between all the wires, there's one of the holes that's got a, it's keyed. So it has a little plastic thing stuck in the hole so that you don't accidentally, you know, Put the um, connector onto the wrong pin. So I mean, it's a good thing to have, but that was sticking out as well, and so the whole connector wasn't actually flush against the board either. So I fixed that as well, and got that really nailed on there. Turned it on. Was hoping to see red. <laughs> no red. <sighs> so there's something else going on somewhere else on the chassis that's causing that problem, guys. So. I tried, and uh, I was—I must say—I was disappointed because I thought this was the—this could be the first time that I've managed to fix a chassis on my, on my own, not to be. So I took the chassis out, took the monitor. I actually took the whole monitor out. It was just easier. Um, one of the earthing cables was soldered on, so I had to unsolder that to actually get the chassis out. So that was a bit. Bit, uh, a bit annoying <laughs> actually take the whole monitor out do that anyway it's gone to, to joe mac it's gone to joey uh he'll he'll sort it out and um once we get that back we shall get it in and uh, we'll have all the colors guys so that's where we're going to leave it today uh i think um we did well in terms of getting it going of course i need to now still get that processor so that i can put it into the other board because I, I obviously need to get my championship sprint going again but what I can do is I'll get another processor, I'll stick it in the board, we'll stick it in the championship sprint. If it works, then we know that the rest of the board is okay. If it doesn't work, um, well, the new processor could be dead again. But anyway, I'll, I'll work it out. Bottom line is, is I'll hopefully be able to determine if that board is okay. Um, and it was just the processor all along. And also remember that, that ROM that was in the wrong place. That wouldn't have helped. All right, well, that's it for this session. As I said, next uh, time we'll get the monitor in. We're going to clean up these controls. We need to sort out the controls that aren't working. We'll give this cabinet a bit of a clean down for the second part. And then hopefully um, we'll have it all up and running and we'll be able to play some three-player sprint, which I'm really, really looking forward to. So anyway, guys, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't. Thanks, guys, for subscribing for those that have. Remember to fix your games, get them all working, and play your games as much as you can. Take care until next week. And of course, ciao for now.